Pangalawa, true religion is compassionate ministry to the needy. True religion is compassionate ministry to the needy. Sabi ng verse 27, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. To visit orphans and widows in their affliction. Sabi ng isang commentator, si J. of Thomas, Loving our neighbor as ourselves is the second great commandment and here, it is the consequent, indispensable ingredient of true religion. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. Isn't it incredible? Tanong niya. We are being given the only brief definition of pure and faultless religion in the New Testament. And now James tells us, a necessary ingredient is to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. Diba? mag expect ka pagka may definition na ng what is religion. You would expect grabbing definition, comprehensive, malalim, mysterious definition of religion. Pero ang sinabi lang ni James dito, sabi niya lang ito, to visit the orphans and widows in their affliction. Yan ang pure and undefiled religion in the eyes of God. Ano ang ginagawa ni James dito? He is not, again, as katulad ng sa unang point, no? He is not giving us a comprehensive definition of religion. But he is making an important point. Gusto niyang ipakita rito na uh, pagka ang Panginoon Diyos may mga pinadala by His providence na mga tao sa iyo who are needy. Ang tanong is, how do you respond to them? Ang sabi dito ni James, to visit Orphans and widows in their affliction. Very specific. Widows and orphans. Now, tingnan natin, ano ba ibig sabihin ng visit dito? Well, to visit means more than just a social call. Yung, yung normal na ginagamit natin na nagbisita, o bumisita ka ba kay ganito? Hindi lang yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Although it includes that. But it means to look out for, to care for, to be concerned about. Okay, ito yung sinasabi. It is not to focus on yourself, but on the needs of others, to think about others, to think about their needs. Kahit na walang kabayaran na maisosole, to care for orphans and widows. Now, it's very specific. Sabi dito ni James, uh, eto nga, widows and orphans. Uh, bakit sila yung kanyang ginamit? Well, pakinggan ninyo sabi ng isang commentary, College Press New Testament. Sabi doon, in the ancient world, unwanted children were often abandoned to die. Orphans were rarely cared for by the state or by private foundations. Without family on their own, they were certainly in distress. Women in the ancient world seldom worked outside the home. An unmarried woman depended solely on her parents for support. A married woman solely on her husband. A widow without children or with children who would not support her was doomed to poverty. Yan ang isang napakahirap na sitwasyon sa kanilang panahon. Kasi hindi uso nun sa kanila na yung babae nagtatrabaho tulad ngayon. May sariling trabaho, mga babae, doktor, mga babae nagtuturo, minsan mga babae, madalas, mga, ba mga babae, mas malaki pa sweldo sa kanilang mister because they're in the workforce. Pero nung panahon na yon, panahon ni James, hindi ganun. If you were an orphan, if you were a widow, at walang susuporta sa'yo, ikaw ay mamamatay. Kasi dependent ka lang sa ibang tao. And so this is the reason why itong mga taong ito are singled out as being protected by God and as proper objects of compassion and assistance. Now of course, ngayon kung titingnan natin, hindi lamang naman talaga sila yung nangangailangan, pero remember yung konteksto nung sinulat ito. Sila yung mga taong pinaka nangangailangan ng tulong nung mga panahon na yon. Kaya nga makikita natin, God is always concerned with the fatherless and the widows. Exodus chapter 22, verse 22, sabi doon, You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Sabi ng Deuteronomy 14, 28, and 29, every third year demanded a special 10% tithe to be collected from every Jew to care for the uh, orphans and the widows. So Deuteronomy 24 verses 7 up to 22, 
Merong profit sharing plan for orphans and widows to be cared for in the harvesting of the fields. No, na hindi dapat uh, anihin lahat ng field, kundi merong portion doon na iiwan para sa kanila. In Deuteronomy 27 verse 19, God demanded justice for the widow and justice for the orphan. Sinasabi ng Psalm 68 verse 5, God is a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows. Merong special na puso ang Panginoon para dito sa ganitong mga tao in this category. Sabi ng Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 6, If you oppress not the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in his place, neither walk after other gods, fear harm, then... I will cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. In other words, nasabi ng Panginoon, if you care for the widows and the orphans, kung maayos ang pag-aalaga niyo sa kanila, I will bless you. In Acts chapter 6, the very first thing the early church got into uh, nung sila ay uh, uh, yung una sa mga bagay na nakaapekto sa kanilang sa kanilang mga pagkilos doon is getting food to the widows. Yun yung nakag nakagulo ng kanilang organisasyon. Nagkaroon ng pagka pagkakaingit and they, they were already concerned about these uh, widows na nangangailangan ng tulong. And in 1 Timothy chapter 5, Paul writes to the church, he says, Honor widows that are really widows. Ibig sabihin, you take care of them financially. Bigyan nyo sila ng honorarium. No, yung mga widows na talagang mga widows. And so, here we find a lengthy discussion over the care of widows. 1 John chapter 4 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. And he that loves not, knows not God, for God is love. Love should characterize our lives. Dapat ito yung manifestation ng ating salvation. And so, kung i-apply natin ito, kung makikita natin may mga tao in their affliction, particularly etong mga, kung merong mga tao sa ating kalagitnaan who are orphans and who, who are widows na talagang uh, who are in trouble, who are in distress, who are lonely, who are exploited, who are in great need. Ang sinasabi ni James Rito, kahit na ano paman ang mga religious activities na ginagawa mo sa loob ng iglesia, if your heart doesn't reach out to these people in love and affection, and a desire to serve, even though yung mga resources niyo ay limited, Then, ito ay nagpapakita lamang na ikaw ay hindi totoong born again. You are not really regenerate. Dahil kung ikaw ay totoong ligtas, makikita mo, may intindihan mo yung ginawa ni Kristo para sa iyo. Yung awa ni Kristo, yung pag-ibig ni Kristo, yung pagpapala ni Kristo, and you cannot but help also Share to others yung mga bagay na na-experience mo mula sa Panginoon. So, itong sinasabi rito ni James can be expanded to many needy people. Siguro just to give us some idea, and again, itong mga sinasabi ko are things that I, I too will need to evaluate about my life. Papano tayo uh, Kumikilos to, to help, for example, mga AIDS victims, mentally handicapped, elderly, totally deaf, the blind, the drug addict, the homeless, the street children, the flood and famine victims, the refugees. Ito ay kasama dito sa sinasabi ni James na kahit ano pang ganda ng ginagawa natin dito sa loob, ano pang sarap ng sinasabi natin, nararamdaman natin, pero pag tayo lumabas at meron tayong nakatagpo na ganitong klasing mga tao, inaabot ba natin sila? Meron bang compassion sa ating puso? Sabi ng 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18, By this we know love, that He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. 
Pag nakita natin na pinagpapala tayo ng Panginoon at may mga taong nangangailangan ng ating tulong, inaabot ba natin sila? Tumutulong ba tayo dun sa kanila? Now, let's go to the third, practical evidence of true religion. Sabi niya, true religion is keeping your life unstained by the world. Ito yung cleansed life. So, buuin natin, ano, itong verse 97. Religion that is pure and undefiled before the Father is this. Tapos ito na, to keep oneself unstained from the world. So, kasama yon. It is both itong to visit the orphans and the widows and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So, yan ay kasama dito sa sinasabing pure and undefiled religion before God. Now, please take note. This is pure and undefiled religion in the eyes of God. Sa mata ng tao, tayo may mga standards tayo ng isang taong religyoso. Sabi natin, uy, din tayo, yan, tinan mo, talagang napaka-prayerful, oh. Lagi nagpa-fasting, naka-40 days prayer and fasting na yan. We would all say, he is a religious person. Brad, patingin nga ang Bible mo. Pag nakita natin ang, da ang daming guhit, very regular siyang mag-quiet time, lagi siyang nandun sa cell, lagi niyang ginagawa yung kanyang mga assignments, may, may, baka nag-handle pa siya ng Bible study. All of us would be quick to say, there is the religious person. Pero sabi ng ni James, well, what is pure and undefiled religion in the sight of God? Hindi yung sa ating paningin, kundi sa paningin ng Panginoon Diyos. Ito, it's more related to conduct rather than handling Bible studies. Rather than just praying. Now, I'm not saying we should not pray. Kasama yun sa ating practice. If you're not praying, then you're not a true Christian. You're showing you're not dependent upon God. But there are others na pray ng pray, pero pag nandyan ang, ang, ang sitwasyon uh, na, 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 na kailangan nilang kumilos at tumulong, uh, sinasabi nila, Brad, ipagpe-pray na lang kita. Puro prayer na lang. Kahit na may pera naman siya sa kanyang wallet, prayer na lang din ang gagawin niya. Yan ay nagpapakitang hindi ka totoong religyosong tao. From, from an outsider's point of view, yung religyosong tao ay yung nakaluhod, taimting na nagpe-pray, Pero sabi ni James, tinan mo nga yung bibig nun. Tinan mo nga pag may pangangailangan dun sa community kung nandun siya o pag nakakita siya ng isang leper sa tabi, hey, shoot, mas ka nga dyan. Hey, nakakadiri ka. Yung mga ganun, sabi niya, these are not religious people. And then, dagdag pa niya, sabi niya, true religion is keeping your life unstained by the world. Ang ganda na sinabi ng isa, no amount of ministry to others, kasi pambalanse ito, can make up for a failure to guard your own purity or character. Ang galing talaga ng Bible, ano? Etong si, si James, talagang filled with the Holy Spirit. Akala ng mga tao, porket sila ay uh, faithful na nagbabasa ng Bible, okay na. Sabi ni James, hindi. Do not be hearers of the word only, but be doers of it, or else you are deceiving yourself. Okay, so eto ka na. Seemingly, parang... Ginagawa mo na sinasabi ng Biblia, pero uh, siguro, akala mo, uh, ibig sabihin ng sinasabi ng Bible, dapat ako mag-pray, dapat ako mag-fast, dapat lagi ako mag-quiet time, dapat mag-meditate lagi sa salita ng Panginoon Diyos. Dagdagan na naman ni James, sabi niya, teka muna, huwag niyo lolokohin ang inyong sarili. Kung akala ninyo, religyoso na kayo, tinan niyo ang bibig ninyo. So, nabantayan mo na naman, ay, mali pala. So, akala mo, okay na rin yun, na pinipigilan mo yung bibig mo na magsalita na hindi maganda. Mamaya, may mga taong uh, dinala sa yung buhay ang Panginoon na kailangan mong tulungan, umiiwas ka, lumalayo ka rin sa kanila. Sabi ni James, mali na naman yun, hindi na naman totoong relihiyon yun. O di akala mo na naman, okay, dahil, o sige, bibisitahin ko na yung mga, mga nasa orphanages, yung mga widows, tutulungan ko na sila. Pero nakalimutan mo na sa private life mo pala, gumagawa ka pa rin ng kasalanan. Mahilig ka naman mag-internet, pornography ka naman. No? O so, kung titingnan nila sa labas, nako napakabait nitong taong ito. Pero sa loob naman, in your private moments and in, in your private homes, eh, manyak ka pala. No? Sex maniac ka pala. O kaya talagang in bondage ka to, to yung, yung, yung pornography. Or... Uh, uh, maaring uh, dun sa yung, yung puso, kunyari, ikaw ay masyadong makamundo sa yung pananaw. And uh, yung mga bagay na pinanunood mo, yung mga bagay na binabasa mo, yung mga bagay na mahilig mong pakinggan, ay mga bagay na kontra sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Yung mga ambition mo, yung mga desire mo, eh, yung mga sinasabi ng Biblia na ikaw ay magiging kaibigan ng mundo. 
Tulad ng the pride of life, lagi mong ipinagmamalaki yung mga bagay na meron sa iyo o kaya the lust of the flesh na yung gusto mo lang lagi yung mga bagay na magbibigay ng aliw sa yung laman or the 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 lust of the eyes. Yung mga bagay na nagpi-please lamang sa paningin, doon ka lagi nagpo-focus and so you're always looking at yung mga mga bagay na magpapakita ng iyong power, ng inyong glory, ng inyong ganda and all focused on that. And yet, maaring sinasabi mo, tumutulong ka sa iba, pero yung pananaw mo, it's very worldly. You're more controlled by, by the world. And so this is what James is trying to say. True religion is also keeping your life unstained by the world. Hindi ka rin nadadala nitong perspective ng mundo. Yung standard ng mundong ito. I want you to notice uh, several things here. Tinan niyo ang tatlong bagay na makikita niya natin rito. Sabi dito, to keep one's self. Kung mapapansin niyo rito, itong being unstained from the world is something that you and I have to do. Tayo gagawa nito. You keep yourself, James says. Siguro sa sabi ng iba, eh, hindi, di ba sinasabi ng Bible, God is the one who keeps us. Di ba sabi ni David, the Lord is my shepherd. Totoo yun. Pero kung babasahin din natin na mabuti yung scripture, madidiskubre natin, for example, sa Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Sabi doon sa isang translation, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. Ano sinasabi rito? Well, for one thing, sinasabi rito, ang Panginoon Diyos ang kumikilos sa loob natin. Pero sa ibang translation, sabi, work out your salvation. Yes, si Lord ang kumikilos sa atin, pero dapat ilabas din natin yun. Nandun yun, there is 100% the work of God in our lives, but there is also 100% our work. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, eh, ba, si Lord lang ang bahala, siya lang ang kikilos. I don't even have to exert any effort in order to keep myself being un, being stained by the world. Hindi ko na kailangan gawin yun, bahala na lang si Lord sa akin. So, I can expose myself to movies, I can expose myself to videos, I can expose myself to the internet, kahit ano pang mga tukso yan, kahit na may mangyari pang ano, hindi ako madadala because God is going to protect me. Wrong. Mali. Sinasabi ng Biblia, you are to flee from temptation. The Bible says, pray always. The Bible says, uh, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. And so we have to continue to pray. The Lord Jesus Christ warned, uh, sabi niya kay, kay Peter, uh, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked permission to sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And yet he also tells Peter that, uh, together with the other apostles, that they are to pray so that they will not fall into temptation. Totoo, nagpray na si Jesus Christ para sa kanila, pero dapat pa, lang, pa rin silang magpray. Dapat pa rin layuan nila ang kasalanan. Dapat hindi nila ina-expose ang kanilang sarili dito sa mga bagay na kung saan maari silang bumagsak. So, here we find itong dalawang bagay nito working together. Here is God's sovereign work in our lives to sanctify us, but there is also our self-discipline, our involvement in all of this so that we will not be stained by the world. Here is the second thing that we observe here. The Christian keeps himself from being polluted. Being polluted. It's very interesting na ang mundo natin yan is very much conscious about pollution in the environment. Masyadong maingat tungkol sa pagkakalat, sa pagdudumi ng mga tubig, sa pagdudumi ng dagat, pagdumi ng, uh, ng mga bundok, ng mga ganito at ganyang lugar. Masyadong, masyadong parang may absolute obsession na huwag mapollute yung ating planeta. And yet the question is, what about moral pollution? What about moral pollution? Di ba kung titingnan natin yung advertising Titingnan natin sa internet, mga magazine, mga newspaper, TV, cinema, and all others. Grabe ang moral pollution. Na mga tao, hindi nila nakikita. And people sometimes just see things as pure entertainment. Kaya nga ngayon, nagiging issue sa Manila. Nakarinig ako na isang interview kahapon sa DZRH about this pastor was talking about yung reaction ng mga pastors about Lady Gaga going to uh, Metro Manila for a two-day concert, if I'm not mistaken. 
And ngayon, putok na putok yan sa internet, uh, Uh, lalo na papakita ng mga pictures ni Lady Gaga na naka-costume na parang demonyo o yung mga kanta na ano ba, I love Judas or whatever. So, ah, pumuputok ngayon yan. And, and uh, there are, uh, ang comment itong pastor na to, sabi niya, hindi ko naman sinasabing mga satanist, ang mga ano, o pupunta ng impyerno, mga lahat ng pumupunta, pero sabi niya, we have to say this, we have to inform them na kuminsan they just went there for pure entertainment, but Parang gusto niya sabihin, they don't know what they are exposing themselves to. Yung mga anak natin, what they are being exposed to, pagka na-expose sila sa ganitong mga bagay. One time nga, nagkukwentuhan kami ng wife ko and she shared with me na meron daw siyang, I think nakita niya sa internet, oh, na meron nang nagpapa parang transplant ng sungay. Mga maliliit na sungay na nagpapalagay yung mga tao. Hindi ka maisip na ganun. Di ba demonyo yun? No, noon, pag sinabing demonyo, ayaw mo maging demonyo. Ngayon, yung mga tao, gustong magmukhang demonyo. para ano na nangyari doon sa kanila? Hindi, hindi natin akalain na abot tayo doon sa panahon na pagdating ng mga patalastas, dati, pag kami naglilips to lips, nung kabataan ko, makakapanood ako ng patalastas, parang kinikilabutan ako. Ngayon, normal na lang. Kahit na anong klaseng patalastas, may mga ganun na. And parang dumarating yung time na pababa ng pababa yung standard natin. And I even have to, even pagkatapos ko nang basahin itong mga to, I begin to realize, Lord, kailangan bantayan ko rin sarili ko. Sometimes, yung mga kasalanan ko, honestly, sometimes sagay marinig ako, ah, maganda raw itong video na to kasi ito, blockbuster ito, o kaya ito, nat- nanalo ito ng award sa ganito o sa ganyan. Oy, very interesting yan. So, ano to, talagang uh, highly acclaimed movie, yung mga critics, ang taas ng pagtingin nila dito. But I have to be careful. Maaaring pagpanood ko na yun, yung sinasabi na talagang highly acclaimed, eh, may kasamang pornography. And ipopromote ko pa ba? Sabihin ko, ay, nako, panuorin nyo, talagang ang ganda nito. Maaring merong in some aspects, may leksyon na matututunan, pero what about the other portions there that can tempt a person, that can pollute the mind? Sometimes I've been talking to children and some of these children would say, uh, sana hindi na lamang ako, hindi ko na lamang nalaman itong site na ito o hindi na lamang sana ako nakaano dito sa internet kasi ngayon ang dami-dami ko ng mga nakita na hindi ko dapat nakikita mga bad na mga bagay and it has polluted their mind na kahit na yung mga anime na mga movies na nakikita nila sa YouTube is filled with filth and where small girls and small boys are involved in sex, and these young teenagers, and even those who are not yet teenagers, kung ano-ano na pumapasok sa kanilang isipan. And this is the world that we live in. And ito sinasabi ni James, we are Christians are to keep themselves from being polluted. Ang ganda na sinabi ni Robert Murray McChain about this, when he was still in his 20s, And many became true Christians because of his influence. Sabi niya, Above all things, cultivate your own spirit. Your own soul is your first and greatest care. Seek advance in personal holiness. It is not great talents God blesses so much as great likeness to Jesus. A holy minister is an awful weapon in the hand of God. One word spoken by you when your conscience is clear and your heart is full of God's Spirit is worth 10,000 words spoken in unbelief and sin. So itong taong ito, yun nakita niyo yun eh. That if his heart is not polluted by sin, he can be a powerful instrument to accomplish God's purposes. Another thing na makikita natin dito sa statement na ito ni James is the Christian is to keep himself from being polluted by the world. By the world. Now please take note, itong world na nakalagay dito, this does not mean uh, yung etong mundo na earth na tinitira natin. This, it means the world of men as it is in their alienation from God and rebellion against Him. Ito yung world na sinasabi. We're, we're talking about the world system. We're talking about the customs and habits tainted with evil. We're talking about these pressures that come upon the Christian from the social life 
that direct him towards evil. So sinasabi dito ni James, we are to constantly be alert against these pressures. Sometimes direct itong mga pressure na ito and threat us. Sometimes they are uh, insidious, hindi mo mapapansin. And they are, they are unnoticed. And ito yung sinasabi dito ni James, here is the dilemma, mag-ingat kayo, yes, you are to be involved in the world. You are to help people. You are, you are to be there involved in this world in your secular affairs. But do not forget, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Yes, you are to uh, be involved in, if some are called to become nurses, then you must be there to help the sick or uh, if you are in, 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 in a university and your course is connected to art, yes, you be involved in it. Kung ikaw ay photographer and you have to be, uh, you have to be exposed in this, yes, sige, ituloy mo yun. Uh, ikaw ay nasa medicine, if you're into politics, if you're in the army, if you're in sports, if, if you need to be involved in a music band, okay, sige, may involved ka yun. There's nothing wrong with that. Be in the world. But be careful that you are not of the world. Because mamaya, yung mga kasama natin mga tao, they'll tell us certain things. So, eh, hindi. Pwede, kasama talaga yan eh. Talagang pagka, pagka ginawa mo to eh, dapat daanan mo yung mga yan. And yet, you, you realize when you're already there, teka mo na, eh, kasalanan na to ah. Hindi kasama yan sa politika eh. Pag nandiyan, kailangan marunong kang sumayaw, marunong, ma, marunong kang magbalimbing, kailangan ganito at ganyan. O, kailangan matuto kang magsinungaling pagka lawyer ka na. So, here are things na pressure ng mundong ito. And we need to guard ourselves. We have the writings of, of the Bible, Scripture that tell us, ingatan nyo sarili nyo dito. We have loved ones who, who are in the Lord who remind us and tell us, ingatan nyo sarili nyo tungkol sa mga bagay na ito. And, and we just have to be careful. O, habang tayo nandito sa mundo, sometimes, ayun, parang imagine niyo na lang, imagine ko yung parang pag natapos ang isang ulan, di ba, pag umulan, sometimes there are puddles of water sa, sa tabi ng kalye. And you must be careful na dapat ikaw ay naglalakad lang sa gutter or away from the puddle. I remember uh, a few nights ago after the prayer meeting, we ate in a certain uh, place. Pagkatapos nun, eh, I wanted to get something from the car. Eh, yung kotse namin ay eh, nakapark na malapit dun sa kalye. Eh, kauulan pa lang. And there was a puddle of water there. And then, nung no, may kinukuha ko dun sa likod, bigla may dumaan na kotse, talsik lahat ng tubig dun sa pantalong ko. So, kailangan lumayo ako. So, don't, yun yung isang magandang illustration. No? Dito sa mundong ito, kailangan lumayo tayo kung minsan dyan sa mga sitwasyon na yan na uh, we have to get things. Kung baga, dapat mong kunin yung bagay na yun na dapat mong kunin sa kotse, pero dapat bantayan mo rin ang sarili mo na, oy, teka, may parating na na kotse. Kailangan lumayo na kagad ako dahil pagdaan ito dito, matatalsikan ako ng tubig. Laging ganun. You have to be involved in the world. You have to help widows. You have to help Orphans, you have to uh, be concerned about the things of, of, of the people here. But at the same time, you have to be careful that you are not contaminated by the things of the world, by its standards. And sometimes, grabe ang mundo. Sabi nila maganda and mabibilib tayo dito. Sabi, ito ang ibig sabi ng excelente. Uh, nadadala tayo dun sa mga yon. But then when we're there, makita natin, teka muna, iba naman pagka excelente ito. Bastos naman ito. Di naman ito tama. Matutokso naman ako rito. Masisira naman yung moral standards ko rito. And we have to guard ourselves. Again, this is what James says, what it means to have pure and undefiled religion in the eyes of God. 